Welcome back. Well, I promised you some science, and here it is. After watching John make that contact, I was curious about all the instrumentation that was involved in their setup. This is a radio transmitter receiver called the transceiver. This thing is about 10 years old. Uh, it's a Kenwood. These aren't very popular in the United States anymore, but in Europe, this is the number one radio. And uh, this is an amplifier that gives you more power. The maximum amount of power you can run in the United States is 1,500 watts. This cranks out about four or 500 watts, this little thing. This is an antenna tutor that matches the transmitter to the antennas. And we have uh, six different antennas. We have an antenna switch there. This is a rotator. This rotates the big antenna outside. Rotating the antenna points the signal in different directions. So, how do they manage to talk to someone in Australia, for example? Ham radio goes skip off the F2 layer, okay? And that determines how far you can talk. It skips off the ionosphere. Okay, wait a minute. Ionosphere? This was going to take a little more research for me to understand. The Earth's atmosphere is divided into three separate regions or layers. They are the troposphere, the stratosphere, and the ionosphere. Almost all weather phenomena take place in the troposphere. The conditions in the troposphere have a profound effect on the propagation of radio waves. The stratosphere is located between the troposphere and the ionosphere. Because it's a relatively calm region with little or no temperature change, the stratosphere has almost no effect on radio waves. The ionosphere is the most important region of the Earth's atmosphere for long-distance point-to-point communications. Because the existence of the ionosphere is directly related to radiation emitted from the Sun, the movement of the Earth about the Sun or changes in the Sun's activity will result in variations in the ionosphere. Now, the ionosphere itself is divided into layers, as you can see here. When a radio wave is transmitted into these ionized layers, it is refracted, or bent. I warned you, this was science content. The higher frequencies skip off the E layer, which is lower, it's about 60 miles high, instead of about 120 miles, and that's good for like six meters. That's only good during the summer. And the way you, you aim for the middle of the biggest thunderstorm out in the Midwest, and that's where the E cloud is. And uh, then you can talk, you know, like 1,200 miles a, a, per skip. Obviously, it's more complicated than that, but those are the basics. Now you can see why the FCC requires hams to learn radio technology and become licensed to use the amateur radio bands. Experience, however, makes band selection a snap. With experience, you, you get to know what band's going to be open on, at what time. If you want to talk to Europe on 40 meter sideband, that's voice, then that's in the evening starting around 7 o'clock to around 11. Okay, if you want to talk to Australia on 40 meters, okay, that's about 6, 7 a.m. That's when it comes in. Some places, like India, are hard to reach from the U.S. because the radio waves travel over the Arctic, where there is rarely an ionosphere. Other places, however, are easier to reach. It's very, very easy to talk to South America because the skip that goes across the equator every single day. So you can work South America, the Caribbean, very easily. While it's no longer required to know Morse code to become a ham, it is still used in making contacts. Around the world, ham operators come from all different backgrounds and vocations. There's great diversity just within the Susquehanna Valley's club. Well, John's a retired physician. Uh, we've had undertakers, uh, uh, school teachers. Uh, I worked in manufacturing industry for a number of years, did a number of other jobs. Uh, Al's been in aviation electronics and other uh, technical industries like that, uh, so it just runs a gamut. Preachers, you can't hardly name an occupation that hasn't had ham radio operators involved. There are lots of websites with information about becoming an amateur radio operator, but joining a club is the easiest way to discover more about this hobby. You can find the Susquehanna Valley Amateur Radio Club online at www.svarc.net. 
they'll be glad to introduce you to the world of amateur radio. And coming up next... In Your Neighborhood is on the road in Center County at Poe Valley State Park. Thank you.